So I'm going to show you how to use the new FJD Trion P1 handheld SLAM scanner. So we will have a box that provides the scanner, charger and base plate as well as a camera. So the camera sits on top of the equipment so the first thing we'll do is plug in the USB-C onto the camera itself and to connect the camera there is a top slide where it connects into it. Once it's locked in we'll plug in the USB-C and that allows us to connect to the Insta360. The Insta360 needs to be configured and this one has been already configured by the manufacturer and they have provided a uh, calibration file for point cloud to photo uh, polarization. The next thing we want to do is put in the base plate. The base plate has a crosshair, allows us to create contra points on site so that we can transfer from GPS to uh, point cloud easily. So at the moment this is battery is fully charged, you can check by pressing the uh, button next to the USB-C uh, incoming port. Once that's done, um, and we'll connect the scanner in here. So once it's securely safe, there's a um, cover for the actual sensor and we'll use this to keep it safe and do not lose this. So next thing we want to do is switch it on which takes a couple of seconds and while we do that let's also switch on the camera on the Insta360. Now the next thing you want to do is this scan is controlled by a Wi-Fi controller and we will have to connect to the scanner using the Wi-Fi and the password is FJD Prion. So the Wi-Fi network name will come up with the serial number or starts with the prefix of FJP. Once it's connected, open up your browser. I normally use Safari for my phones and we need to go to HTTP without the S to forward slash 192.168.1254 and that opens up the app and that's how you connect to the scanner. Once it's loaded, we'll be able to start the scan. I will show you how to position the scanner now. So to start the scan, we've got to put it in a position of good reference across all the areas in the property. So I'm going to put it in, put in the corridor and this gives me access in terms of the point cloud all 360. So you've got the living room, kitchen and bedroom as well as the corridor and as it's getting some of the ceiling as well we'll be able to get the staircase. So once we've got it on the floor we can start the scan by leaving the room starting the scan. I'll give it a project name and press OK. It will take up to a minute to load up and it is recommended to leave it on for a couple of seconds before picking it up so that it gets a good reference of all the rooms in the property. So now it's loaded up, I'm just going to give it a couple of more seconds and then I'm going to go pick it up so that it gets a better reference with the point cloud. So the first thing you want to do is to place the uh, angle of the scanner at maybe 30 to 45 degrees and walk around. It's not great to have it at an incline of 90 degrees because it won't have a good reference point. And when, especially when going through the door, go as much as 180 or 75 degrees to get a better reference. So what I'm going to do is quickly go through each of the rooms and I'll show you how to scan with better resolution the method I go through to get a better floor plan. So when I'm going through the door, I'm going at a large angle because it picks up the point cloud on both sides so that it can reference both the previous rooms and the next room. 
Now that I'm in the room itself, what I normally do is I, I've already pre-planned the room. I, I normally scan close to the wall, even though it's not recommended by the manufacturer. But my registration method is using a reduced scan point cloud uh, distance. So because I'm doing this, I'm getting a lot more closer features at better accuracy rather than further distance because I'll be trimming the point cloud at one meter. So I'm picking up all of the wall features. The reason being is if I trim the point cloud at one meter, I'm not getting anything from the other side. I'm only picking up everything that's closer to the scan. So I've picked up the doorway and all the features of the property, including the chimney, even though I'm that close. So in terms of registration, it's good to have a point character scan and you can go around as much as you can, even if you're picking up the floor, because if you're going up uh, close to the wall, you're not going to get the one meter, which is roughly an arm's length and a bit. So it picks up all that information and you can carry on. While going from the scan, we can actually see the progress of our file and pro uh, project. So you can see and slice through the project and see your path. Because the properties here are fairly, fairly small in the UK, we'll have to do quite a few of these quite fast. And you can do a floor maybe in less than seven minutes. So I'm just going to go finish the other rooms and I'll come back. And when going up the staircase, it's best to go that way because the scans are the scan point is going around on this surface. So I normally just go out and then go going up the staircase. And again, I, when I go through the door, I put it at an angle to get a better reference for both areas, especially if you're changing an environment that's quite drastic. going at a higher altitude to get the skylights of this room because these will be deleted because of my registration method. Once it's all done you can uh, save it and close it wherever you want. Ideally we can close it at the location of the scan but for now we can just close it here because we'll be going outside to do a quick scan on the outdoors. So I'm going to click complete but before I do that, I can actually do a quick review of my scan and just to see if everything's gone through quite well. As you can see, it's picked up the cupboards and any of the skylights in the scan. Even though it's not as detailed here, it's been loaded at a low density so that you can just view the information for the moment. So once that's done, I press complete.
For the next scan, what I'm going to do is to go to go outside. But because we are already here, we can either place it in this region or in the doorway. But because there's, it's not an ideal location, so we're just going to keep it in on the first surface. At least it gets a good reference inside, so that when we do go outside, it's a good connection. So I'm going to start a new scan. I'm going to call it. Up. And again, I'm going to have to just stand a bit back so that when it does, does the scan the referencing, it picks up quite a large area of the current room so that I can do a cloud to cloud registration. So, this is the loading time. And once it's uh, picked up, we'll just give it a few, small, few more seconds. So, we're going to hear the little beep that says it's starting to scan. So, we'll just give it a few more seconds and then we'll go outside so because the scan has a eight meter distance accuracy on there so for the outside we don't need to go as close because we'll be doing a registration up to uh, five uh, meters to get a good uh, scan so uh, again what i've done is go through the door and then we'll Normally going through a corridor, as long as these features are in the in the corridor, we're okay. So what I'm going to do is, because this corridor is quite narrow, in my registration, I'm probably going to reduce it and try to have a better scan because it has a better accuracy. Of course, the point cloud data is on, so we're going to have all of this in color, and the pace of it is quite good. So, the picture is taken every 30 seconds, and so far we can see the point cloud. So, I'm going to do is quickly go through the garden, and the one problem it won't be able to pick up the roof because it's uh, much further than uh, the light. Up. We'll be able to get it a high level, but it's not as great. Again, once it's all done, put it on the floor and press complete. So a few things I want to explain is the point cloud actually isn't capturing this angle so because it's a circular scan so it's going to go all around here but and at this angle you'll see here at the top there's a flat surface that does not capture any scan in this particular angle so I always think that if you're pointing the device don't point it straight at things but point the side because this is the angle of the point cloud so i'll be going out 360 all around and as mentioned always keep it at an angle when walking around to get a better scan so it picks up features from the back as well as going forward so if you're going at a 
90 degree angle flat angle it's not being able it's only being able to pick up this amount of information going forward and so as the floor but if you're going at an angle you're picking up a lot more from the back and giving you a better result because it's picking up a lot more reference point or back sites in that sense from the existing uh, features it's already picked up so that gives you a better result and once it's all done we will need to download the files using the phone or connect it to our uh, laptop using the Wi-Fi there's no USB well there is a USB feature I uh, don't I prefer just using the phone to download the files there's no SD card and that's how you get the scans from the scanner and it's pretty fast compared to the BRK360 in terms of downloading the, the files so I would say keeping the scans less than 10 minutes uh, is ideal for the registration purposes so that the calculations work quite well one thing that did not get picked up on this because the area is fairly small is closing the loop it would only happen on large uh, areas and when you go back to to the point of origin for your control point it will pick up your some of the areas that are corresponding from the scan and would, would say it has closed one or more loops i hope the video has helped you uh, understand the workflow for setting up uh, the scanner and using it i will post some more videos on how to do the registrations and using other features of the fjd Trion model which is similar to cloud compare but it has specific features for registration for the slam scanner other than that if you are in london and would like to try the scanner please reach out to me if it's available i might be able to rent it out or you can come and uh, take a look at it um quite happy to uh, demo or show the equipment for anyone who's interested